Hi everyone, it's Karen the Geordie Grandma. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for dropping by. I've got something a little bit different for you today. I was reading a post on Facebook where they were talking about childhood games, kind of playground games, and I really enjoyed reading about them and, and reminiscing about the games that I used to play. So I thought I'd start a, a series on a Sunday of Do You Remember? Um, I'm 56, so I was born in 1963, so the Do You Remembers are going to be like from the 70s and probably the 80s. So I thought I'd kick off today with my seven favourite childhood games. Now I'm not talking about computer games because I didn't have them then. I'm not talking about board games. I'm talking about games that you used to play outside, most of them. There is a couple that you would play inside, but most of them were played outside. So I'm going to do them in reverse order of things that I, I really enjoyed. Now, number one was something called Cat's Cradle. Now, you play this with a piece of string. Yeah, piece of string. Great fun to be had. I actually saw these on Amazon. You could buy the game Cat's Cradle for £2.90. It's basically a piece of string. And what you did was you put it around your wrist. You played it with two people normally. Um, you put it around your wrists and then you kind of make patterns with the string. So if I remember rightly, this was, this was the first move, kind of your finger in there and got your finger in there don't think this piece of strings long enough but that's kind of the pattern you made if you can see that and what happened next was the person that you were playing with would get the fingers and they would take the string off you and they would make a different pattern with it you could play for hours with that just a piece of string it, it's it's quite um it's quite difficult to do and i had to actually google how to how to start it off because i couldn't really remember but we did have hours of fun with that game so that was cat's cradle you don't need to buy expensive stuff it's a piece of string i suppose if you wanted to learn about all of the different shapes you could make with it maybe the two pound 91 on amazon has got a little booklet that shows you what to do but you could probably google it anyway so that was cat's cradle At number two i haven't got anything to demonstrate here but number two was what we called elastics you used to buy a packet of elastic bands at the shop can't remember how much they were they were probably pennies at the time and you used to knot all the elastic bands together so you'd get a big long row of them. Now you could play this in two different ways. It was, again, normally played with at least two people. You'd have two people holding each end of the elastics. And then you would start with where they hold, held the elastic at the ankle level and you used to have to jump over it. And then they'd go up to knee level and you'd jump over that. You can say where I'm going with this. Go to hip, then waist, then underarm, then shoulder, then head. I don't think I ever got any higher than waist at the time. I don't think I could even do knee now. But you could have so much fun with that. And you could also play where you, you, you kind of made the elastics into a loop and two people would stand with it round their ankles. I don't know why I'm moving my legs because you can't see them. You'd stand with it around your ankles and open your legs a bit so it made like a, a ring with a, a bit in the middle. Sort of a long oblong shape. And the person would do a rhyme, you'd do like two, four, six, eight, and you'd have to jump, put your legs between each elastics, then in the middle and then over the elastics. Probably not explaining that very well. If I can find a picture of it, I'll I'll put it I'll put it in. Um but again, simple game, really cheap, um, and we used to spend hours playing with it. I even remember trying to play it on my own. There was two lampposts or there was a lamppost and something else that was quite close together and I would put them onto those and then move them up and down um, and just play it on my own. Um, but yeah, you could have loads of fun with that. So that was at number six was elastics. Did I say two? That was at number six was elastics. Number five was a game we used to call curly cabbages. Now, again, I googled this. Uh, just to make sure I'd got I'd got the the game right in my head and I hadn't made it up. But we definitely sorry, my eyes watering in the corner. We called it curly cabbages, but apparently this game was called Mother May I, and I don't remember that bit. But you did lots of different moves. Somebody would be somebody would be on, and they'd stand at the front, and then other people. You would play with this with a group of people, and and the other people would stand, you know, quite a way back, and then the person that was on would say. You've got to do three curly cabbages. It was kind of a twirl where you twirled around and you moved forward. And that was a curly cabbage. There was other moves such as 
baby steps so they say do 10 baby steps and you do tiny little baby steps to get closer to the person that was on the name of the game was the person who got to the person that was on first won and then they were on so the different moves it was like the curly cabbages the baby steps you would do giant steps we did something called lamp posts where you lay down on the ground and then you got up where your head would have been and you, so you moved forward like that there was some strange moves, something called squash tomatoes, where you'd like jump and do a squat and, and do like a farting noise as you did it, which was uh, quite gross really. But uh, again, a fun game, you know, didn't cost you anything. We used to play out in the street for hours playing games like that. Real good fun. So that was at number five. Can you imagine asking your kids to play these games now? I remember telling my, my kids, Simon and Nicola, about them when they were younger and they'd just look at me and say, Mother, what are you on about? Um, but anyway, that was number five. It, number four was uh, marbles. And marbles is obviously self-explanatory, the little glass marble bead kind of things. And you used to put them on the ground. It's a little bit like bowls. You'd put one a bit far away and then people would flick their marbles and try and get close to the, the marble that was further away. And the person who got the closest, they won the marbles. And you used to have these huge bags of marbles at the end of the day or somebody would have no marbles because they'd lost everything. Um, but uh, marbles were really cheap. You got some really nice marbles as well with nice patterns in them. But you'd play, again, you'd play for hours playing marbles in the street. Strange as though it might sound, I don't know if kids still play marbles. We used to play marbles in the playground at school. I actually think they got confiscated um, at some point by the teachers because they were, they were sick of marbles all over the place. So that was marbles. Number three was something called Paper Fortune Teller. Now, again, I googled this because I couldn't remember how to make it. But it's a little, pa it's made with paper. And if you, I'll put the, drop a link down below on how to make this because it was quite difficult. It was, I mean, it was easy when we used to make it, but I found it quite difficult. So a little piece of paper like that, you hold it in your hands and you write numbers. If you can see that. I actually made this for you. you. You wrote numbers on it, so I've got one to eight written on there. And you'd say to the person you were playing with, what number do you want? And they'd say maybe six. And you'd go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you would open it up. And underneath... You would have colours written. My writing's atrocious. And you'd say, pick a colour. And they'd say, okay, say the pig green. G-R-E-E-N. Good way to learn how to spell as well. See, educational toys. So the, the pig green, and then you'd land on, on a, another one. And you'd say, okay, pick another colour. And say they said black. You'd open the paper up, open up the flap that had black on it. And there would be a little message written on the flap. Now, when we were kids... So, so maybe, you know, seven, eight, you'd have things written on it like, you're my best friend, or, or maybe you stink, or something like that. You know, the childish things you'd have written on them. As we got a little bit older, because I can still remember playing this at maybe 11, even 12, um, you'd have things on it like, you'd write all the boys' names, and, the, you know, well, eight of the boys' names from your class on it. Um, and you'd say, you'd say to the person, okay, you're going to find out which which boy in your class you're going to marry, and you'd have some, you'd have some nice boys in there, and you'd have maybe some not so nice boys in there. So that that was that was fun when you're yeah, you know 10, 11, That's a fun thing to do. But I was thinking maybe you could even use this now if you're quite indecisive. We often, um, you know, we think what we're going to watch on TV. I wish you could write the names down of all the TV programmes that you want to watch but haven't gotten round to. And you could choose a programme that way. So you could, you know, you could have all that written in there. Or maybe takeaways. Maybe you can't agree on a takeaway to have. Write all the different takeaways down. Then there's no problem with just getting that takeaway. So that's a paper fortune teller. If you want to have a go, like I say, I'll drop a link down below on how to make it but that was really fun i'd actually enjoyed remembering that that was fun at number two was something we called band sticks now i don't know if this was this was just in the northeast but when i was i must have been about seven say, so this was probably very early 70s there was a big um trend 
of marching bands. So there would be, you know, maybe people would set up their own marching bands. I mean, they were quite quite professional. They had proper uniforms, you know, they would play musical instruments like drums and what we call kazoos. Um, there would be people carrying a, a, like a banner with the band's name on it. And they used to have competitions from all over the northeast that congregate in a field and, and have these competitions where they'd march around and they would get judged which was the best band. But there was always someone at the front of the band, and I think they were called the, the drum majorette, if I remember rightly. And they twirled like, you know, what like what the Americans do now, like a baton thing. But we called it a band stick, and it was a big ornate thing, a long band stick with a big silver bauble on the top. And I think I joined one of these bands once, but I was never good enough to be the drum majorette. I was always a, a kazoo player or a held the flipping banner or something, so I wasn't a member of one very long. But there was a huge trend of girls playing what we call band sticks in the street. And we'd get this, it was off a, a broom, you'd get the handle off the broom, so the broom shank. And we used to get some, some coloured tape and we'd wind the tape around the band stick, around the broom shank. Um, you know, maybe two ways, so it was all crisscrossed. And then we'd get, and this was the important bit, you'd get an empty washing up liquid bottle and you'd stick it on top of the band stick. Don't think we actually coloured the washing liquid bottle up, coloured coloured it in. We just stuck the fairy, it was probably fairy liquid we used. Stuck that on the band stick. You'd stand in the street with your friends and you'd twirl the band stick and throw, and throw it up in the air and try and catch it. I was always covered in bruises. But you could see kids in every street in, in Gateshead definitely playing band sticks. Girl, it, it was mainly girls used to play it for hours, playing band sticks. I don't know if I could do that now. I'd probably brain myself or something. But band sticks was very popular when when I was um, when it, when it was the early seventies. Very popular. I'd love to know if that was something that was countrywide or whether it was just the northeast. Let us know in the comments below. So we get to number one. My number one favorite childhood game was something called two baller. Now you'd get two, could be tennis balls, could be little rubber ball, well not little, they had to be sort of <laughs> big enough to hold your hand, sorry about that. Um, but two baller, anyway, and you'd, you'd, you could play this on your own. You'd stand outside and you'd throw the balls against the wall, one after the other, and you'd sing a rhyme as you, as you did it. So the, one of the rhymes that I remember was something called Lemonade Fizzy Pop, I'm on for Plainsy, Let It Drop. And that was just a plain throw in the ball. You let the ball drop, you catch it. And then you do the next verse, Lemonade Fizzy Pop, I'm on for Over, Let It Drop. And you'd throw the ball over arm, bounce it against the wall, and then let it drop. And this would go on. There was loads of different moves. So there was there was Downsy, so you'd bounce the ball on the floor. Now Upsy, you'd chuck the ball in the air. There was through the leg, so you'd sort of chuck the ball through through your legs from behind and bounce it against the wall. There was loads of different moves. And I'd, that was definitely my favourite childhood game. I could always be seen playing that on a night time and a weekend. I even played it in the house against the wall. I don't recommend that. Kids, if anybody kids is watching, don't do it against the wall. Do it outside. Um, we even used to do it on the end of our block. There was a great big brick wall and we used to do that on the end wall. I, I don't know if they could hear it in the house actually, but there was maybe a line of six of six girls playing this two baller against the wall. I think there was other rhymes, but Lemonade Fizzy Pop was the one I remember. So I hope you enjoyed listening to my childhood reminiscences. Reminiscences? Reminiscing? Childhood reminiscent of, of games that, that I love. That was my seven favourite games. If you played any of those, I would love to hear about it. If there was any other games you played from childhood that you really enjoyed, I'd love to know about them. Uh, just uh, drop a note in the comments below. Like I say, I'm going to do this as a kind of Do You Remember series. So next week, I think I'm going to do... Um, TV series from when I was a child, so probably from late 60s, early 70s again. So I'll, I'll do a bit of research on that and see if I can remember what I used to love watching when we did have telly. It was actually black and white. But never mind, that, that's next week. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you liked what I'm talking about, then just click the little subscribe button and then hit the little bell and you'll get notified when I put a new video up. But that's it for now and I'll see you soon. Bye.